Hey everyone, Skull902 here, and this is the finale of Donkey Kong Country. We're going to be going through World 6 and 7 here today. Uh, and I'm pretty gosh darn excited about the, the big grand finale for DKC. Something else I've been excited about for quite some time, actually, uh, is the response to uh, a bit of a... How should I say? Jackass moment. Uh, from notoriously dog shit let's player uh, Darkside Phil, uh, when he was playing the game last March for his uh, for his stream for his you know LP whatever, uh, he what he does is he does his uh, recordings live, uh, and he streams them. Uh, now Phil is pretty infamous for uh, quite a lot of things, but his uh, god awful commentary is one of them. Uh, and basically, he was doing the typical DSP thing. He was just, you know, sitting there quietly while uh, he was going through the game, and uh, I either that or like burping or snorting or clearing his throat directly into his microphone uh, and, and everything like that. So someone said that his commentary wasn't, you know, that great. He should improve. Uh, he then went on a rant about this this one particular person uh, and told him, I'm trying to concentrate on playing this hard platformer. Uh, what do you expect me to do? Uh, tell stories from my past and all, all this shit? And it was during this level. So, uh, what I would like to do in response to that asinine, asinine comment is focus on this level while also telling you a story from my past. And the story I'm going to be telling you is the first time I ever went to a Dave & Buster's. You see, back in late 2009, uh, I, I was, uh, you know, just, just starting to get out and uh, go do things again, you know. It, it had been a little while uh, since I had really gotten the chance to, you know, hang out and be a teenager. Uh, and I had a friend uh, who, you know, regularly uh, did this with me, like, nearly every day. Uh, so, one of the things that he suggested was, Hey, you know, do you want to go to Dave & Buster's? And I, I knew what Dave & Buster's was, it, it, you know, it's an arcade and whatnot. Um, so, I, I, you know, decided to uh, give it a go. Because, you know, why not? Sounds like fun. Um, and one thing that we had done before was play House of the Dead. Uh, at uh, the local movie theater. Uh, and so when I saw that uh, the Dave & Busters had House of the Dead 1, 2, 3, and 4, I was like, oh my god, we need to play a bunch of these. So uh, my friend and I, we went and uh, we played and uh, kicked a little bit of zombie ass in House of the Dead 1, and then we switched over to House of the Dead 2, uh, and then uh, went over to House of the Dead 3, uh, and man, those pump-action rifles are uh, quite a satisfying controller to use, let me tell you. And we had a grand old time, uh, and then I got introduced to the ticket games, and uh, I'll even include a little picture from uh, my DeviantArt profile, actually. Uh, I uh, got enough tickets to uh, win some uh, some plushes of uh, Bart Simpson uh, and... Or, no, no, no. Sorry, that was a later trip. Uh, the first one was Homer Simpson. So, th there we are. Homer Simpson. I, I won Homer Simpson. Uh, so, you know, I, I had my eyes open to the greatness that is, in fact, Dave and & Buster's, and uh, my friend and I regularly went there for, you know, the next year and a half. Uh, and even with other friends, I, I still went there for, like, another two years after the uh, original uh, time going there, and I, I absolutely love the place. Uh... Haven't gone there much since, uh, you know, late 2011, but uh, I, I hold those memories very near and dear to me. That Dave & Buster's also had an original Donkey Kong cabinet, and that's how it's tying into this playthrough, folks. See, it's not so hard to focus on Donkey Kong Country while telling a story from your, from your past. Fuck you, Phil, you piece of fucking dog shit. Anyway. So, uh, another thing that uh, I, I have to talk about here is I actually need to make a correction uh, with that uh, Kremling story that I told you last time. Uh, 
my my little brother's head cannon. Uh, it it got some details wrong. The story is essentially the same, but uh, I I messed up on a detail or two here. Um, so in, in his uh, in his story, uh, or in his head cannon, whatever. Um, the Kremlin refugees weren't like specifically going to Donkey Kong Island for the bananas. Uh, they were actually uh, just there looking for food because you know they were starved, so they they just they just wanted some food. Uh, and uh, instead of just being denied food, uh, he said uh, that the Kongs actually went and uh, killed said refugees. Uh, so. Uh, that's that's what prompted uh, King K. Rule to uh, declare war on Donkey Kong Island when he heard that uh, the Kongs had killed emaciated Kremlin refugees who were just looking for food. So that's what it was. Uh, I, I got a few details wrong. Uh, it, what I remembered was much lighter than the actual story that my brother uh, came up with for uh, the real reason behind this game. Uh, so, are the Kongs the villains? You decide. Uh, <laughs> it's it's fucking crazy. Uh, I'll just I'll just say that it is absolutely fucking crazy. Uh, the the head cannon that he came up with and uh, I I kind of want to see a ROM hack now that has like a cutscene at the beginning showing that version of the story. Aside from that, though, we are in uh, World Six. Uh, and this actually uh, can be one of the uh, more annoying levels of the game because of, uh, not because of the naughties. Uh, they're not really too much of a problem, but uh, like the, the enemies that, uh, you know, pop out of these, uh, uh, you know, drums here. Uh, sometimes, sometimes it can happen quickly and you're, you're not really expecting it. Um, so just just try to keep a look of uh, of what's ahead of you, and uh, you know you'll be safe. There there also seems to be a a bit of a lack of um, DK barrels uh, in in this level as well. So uh, you you definitely want to try and uh, go through here without being hit. Speaking of drums, uh, like oil drums, that type of thing, uh, I. Didn't have enough time to really uh, get into the specifics of um, the boss from World 5, so I might as well uh, tell you what uh, Boss Dumb Drum is all about. Uh, basically, there's like uh, phases to the guy. Uh, there's, there's five phases, uh, and he'll uh, spit out enemies uh, each time, and then... Uh, you know, each time you beat the enemies, uh, he'll like try to stomp on you, and he stomps on. Or he tries to stomp on you more times uh, per you know phase. So uh, you, you beat the first phase, he tries to stomp on you once, and and so on. Um, so uh, for the most part, like I, I got him with Diddy. Uh, so, like, he, he spits out enemies that, that Diddy can uh, can kill regardless, though so, it, it is kind of tricky because uh, uh, number four of five is uh, Clump. So, uh, again, Clump is an enemy that Diddy can't directly jump on, but he can, uh, he can dispose of by cartwheeling into him. Uh, so you gotta keep that, like, clear. It, it's actually uh, some, uh, some good tricky design that uh, Rare did. Uh, Placing clump uh, fourth in case you uh, had Diddy so that like it, it threw you off Because uh, honestly that boss isn't all too hard uh, But like uh, Having having that part where it can uh, throw you off and be like oh fuck I can't you know get clump with uh, with a jump uh, At least if you're playing as Diddy anyway Donkey Kong can take care of that guy. No problem um, You know uh, I appreciated it uh, it, it was, a, it was a fun choice. Uh, good boss, I would say. Um, so yeah. Uh, essentially just, uh, you know, good stuff. Uh, when you, when you beat him at the end, uh, he, it, it's not like a, a last attempt desperation kind of thing. Uh, when, when he tries to crush you again. Uh, it, it's just him falling down. It, it won't kill you. 
I, I know it looked kind of uh, perilous, uh, but, uh, you know, I, I ran past and I was in no danger of dying at all, so. There you go. Uh, the last level that I did, Loopy Lights, is uh, probably one of the hardest levels in the game. Uh, for the most part. Uh, I actually find the zinger part to be, uh, you know, pretty easy to deal with. Because, uh, uh, you, you know, they have those big white eyes and uh, they, they don't disappear in the darkness, essentially. Um, so, uh, they're not too bad, actually, to deal with. Uh, but otherwise, uh, the enemies can, like, really, uh, screw with you, is, you know, uh, because sometimes, like, clap traps, for instance, uh, especially the one at the end can, can be sort of hard to see in the dark. Uh, so it's, it's kind of like stop and go station in a way because you're controlling the lights. Um, but again, just like, uh, uh, manic mincers, you know, uh, just stay diligent, try to keep some awareness of your surroundings, and you'll be okay. Platform Perils uh, is actually a level uh, that seems to be uh, infamous among uh, like Donkey Kong Country players, and um, I kind of don't know why. Like the it, It's kind of weird. This is like the last proper level of the game, right? Um, but like, it doesn't seem to be as hard as people say that it is. It, it's, it's weird, though, because, like, I, I would totally agree when it comes to the first half of the level. Uh, but when it comes to the second half of the level, like, the second half seems to be way easier to me. Um, than the first half, and I don't know if that's just me, or if, you know, if Rare, uh, did that on purpose. They probably didn't. Um, but, you know, just, just a little weird. Uh, this level also introduces, you, you just uh, saw Donkey Kong uh, hit him with the barrel there. Uh, this is the only level with gray crushes. Uh, normal crushes are blue. Uh, gray crushes uh, cannot be killed by uh, jumping. Uh, they're like zingers in a way, they can only be killed by barrels. Uh, so, it, not even Donkey Kong with how uh, incredibly strong he is, not even he can uh, take down the... Uh, the blue, or sorry, the gray, the the gray crushes. Also, I had never had that happen to me before, uh, where I was able to see my partner run to the end of the level after being hit. That was that was pretty interesting. Uh, so anyway, here we have Master Neki Senior, uh, and he's a little different from uh, Master Neki because, uh, like the the nuts that he throws. Uh, He'll, he'll keep throwing more, and it'll it'll happen faster, too. Like, uh, I think I'm gonna get hit as Donkey Kong here, uh, with, uh, with the last phase. Uh, you gotta stay on one side of the level. Uh, it's not good to stay on the tire. Oh, no, I didn't get hit. Anyway. Um, it's not a good idea to stay on the tire. Just stay on one side, and you should be absolutely fine. Uh, for Master Neki Sr. In the Game Boy Advance version, you gotta fight both of them, which is fucking insane. But anyway, here we are, with the final boss in the game. World 7 is only a boss level. Gangplank Galleon, it's time for us to confront that banana-stealing bastard, King K. Rule. Let's do this. So, uh, for the first phase here, what uh, K. Rule does is uh, he will uh, throw his crown and then, uh, you know, you, you have a bit of time to uh, jump on his head. He'll run towards you uh, and then basically repeat, he throws his crown again. Um, this time what he does, uh, is, you know, he'll start running at you more, so, uh, you, you get the, the first, uh, few hits like that. Then, what he's gonna start do is, <laughs> what he's gonna start doing, I should say, uh, and not, like, lose my words like an idiot, uh, is he'll jump from one side of the ship to the other, and, uh, that'll, like, uh, bring down cannonballs. And it's essentially like uh, the running phase, where uh, this whole thing with uh, the cannonballs uh, will uh, happen uh, more and more times. So it's going to happen uh, twice, and then it's going to happen three times uh, afterward. And, uh, you know, with, uh, with Donkey Kong's slower speed than Diddy, I actually find it uh, much more tricky uh, to, uh, you know, uh, dodge these uh, than... 
you know, I, I would uh, with, with Diddy. Uh, Diddy's speed definitely helps, which is why I actually like starting with Donkey Kong in this boss fight, uh, as opposed to Diddy, because, uh, you, you know, the speed really helps with, uh, with Diddy. But, oh, oh gee, uh, we beat him? Uh, hmm. Wait, credits, why is that spelled wrong? Huh. You know, I, I, I seem to think that perhaps these credits are inaccurate, uh, and we should perhaps complain to Nintendo about this. It, it doesn't seem like those are proper video game credits. Oh well, at least we beat the game, right? Wrong, motherfucker! Uh, so, now, this is K. Rule's uh, desperation sort of time. He'll, uh, he'll do long hops at first, and then in the second phase he'll do shorter hops like medium-sized hops. You, you bounce on him again, and then he's gonna repeat the process, but the third time he's gonna do these teensy-weensy little baby hops uh, that, uh, again, timing is a bitch with Donkey Kong. Uh, and I, I wasn't quite able to roll under him. Uh, but thankfully, uh, that, was, that was the last of it. Uh, Diddy Kong was right there when I needed him. Uh, and it's actually rather fitting, I think, uh, because, uh, you know, Diddy's gonna be, like, the star of the next game, so it's kind of like a passing of the torch type thing. Uh, here we have more cranky abuse, uh, but, no, uh, it, it's, uh, it's a really challenging boss fight. Like, it's, it's definitely the, the most challenging of all the boss fights in the game, K. Rule is. Um, but, uh, I, I find it pretty fun. Uh, it, it took me an ungodly amount of tries, though, the first time uh, I, I played it. Uh, and uh, here, we, we saved the banana horde. Look at that. Good stuff. Um, but a anyway, about uh, the, the K. Rule boss fight, you know, uh, definitely well designed uh, and, and all that. Uh, good, good stuff, like I said before. So now, what we're uh, what we're getting here is uh, the credits, and uh, it'll go through like all the enemies, uh, and then all the Kongs, and uh, y you know, like the animal buddies as well, which uh, I, I really quite appreciate. It's uh, it's a good thing. Uh, one more thing, actually, that I wanted to mention about the uh, K. Roll boss fight that I just now remembered uh, was. Uh, I, I've never been able to beat it uh, without taking a hit. Uh, in fact, that's the first time I ever played it without dying in general, uh, this footage here. Uh, so, uh, take that for uh, for what you will. Um, it, it only took one attempt in my recording, uh, which... Actually, when I was doing the practice, uh, it kind of scared the shit out of me. Uh, how many times I thought that I would have to go and uh, play the K-Roll boss fight, but uh, now nah, the, the recording curse was uh, good to me this time around. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the last thing I wanted to say about the boss fight. Really like that boss fight. Uh, so now as, uh, as all this stuff is going on and we're going to be introduced, uh, to the bosses and then the animal buddies and then the Kongs, uh, and then we're, we're going to have a, like a really nice little, uh, slapstick, uh, slapstick bit with, uh, Donkey and Diddy, uh, that I quite appreciate and kind of miss, uh, in the other games. <laughs> Uh, cause they don't, they don't quite have that look at that beautiful animation. Um, but anyway, uh, I, I just wanted to, uh, take some time to, uh, reflect about this game and, uh, you know, uh, I didn't get to play it much when I originally had it when I was a kid. Uh, and I definitely think having, having beaten it, uh, when I was, you know, near 24 years old, I was a full grown adult by then. Uh, you know, uh, I, I, I think I definitely missed out, but I'm glad that, uh, I remembered this game, uh, and I, I really do think that it's the classic that, uh, it's lauded to be. Um, this, this game cemented Rare's status in the video game industry, uh, as, like, a, a company that meant real business and, uh, could make, you know, uh, 8, 9, 10 out of 10 type games. This game is definitely, definitely one of the best offerings the Super Nintendo has. Uh, hats off to everybody involved uh, in making this. Like, the graphics, 
uh, are really nice and charming. Uh, the animations like this, uh, again, are, are really nice and charming. Uh, very impressive. Uh, you know, I used to think that this was a Super FX game, and it, it, was, it wasn't until, like, uh, a couple years ago that uh, I, I actually looked into it, and no, this is, this is a standard Super Nintendo cart. Like, that is so unbelievably impressive that they were able to cram this all in on a normal Super Nintendo cartridge. Um, you know, uh, like I said, the graphics, uh, the music, the music is absolutely so beautiful. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really glad. And this was probably an introduction for so many people to, peop uh, to uh, composers like David Wise and Evelyn Fisher and, uh, you know, uh, the, the Rare Team. Uh, who had like their own special brand of music uh, that I don't think has really uh, been emulated by uh, other composers uh, before or since then. Really good stuff. And then of course there's the gameplay. There's the reason. There's a reason why this game is considered a classic. Um, you know, great gameplay, great level design, absolutely fantastic bosses. This is a fun game all around. Uh, you know, there's some frustrating parts here and there, uh, but, you know, that's, that's every game, uh, essentially. That's, that's nearly every game, I, I should say. Uh, 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 you know, it's, it's something where you can just ignore most of it, and Donkey Kong Country is a bona fide classic. Try it if you haven't tried it. It is an absolutely fantastic game. So, one final thing that I wanted to show off before I end this bit is, uh, if you actually uh, go into the game and uh, go back into Jungle Hijinks, you can visit the Banana Horde, and it will actually be like it was in the in the cutscene before the credits. Uh, it's it's here, so that's awesome stuff. And uh, you know, I, I really like that sort of attention to detail. Uh, it's absolutely cool. Donkey Kong Country is a fantastic classic game, and I absolutely love it to death. Uh, but I'm going over time, so I'm going, uh, so I'm going to uh, wrap things up now. I've said essentially all that I needed to say. Uh, thank you for indulging in my uh, Donkey Kong Country Let's Play. Uh, thank you for watching it, uh, you know, even if it was just a little bit. Uh, really appreciate it, and uh, I hope that you guys stick around for next time. Uh, my next Nintendo game is going to be... Uh, Super Mario Brothers The Lost Levels, uh, and of course when I get back to Donkey Kong, it's going to be Donkey Kong Country 2 Diddy's Conquest. So uh, once again, uh, thank you for watching so much. I've been Skull902, thank you for watching again, uh, and have yourselves a wonderful day.